my workout schedule for the week. It starts on Monday and Monday is actually a rest day for me. If you are just getting into working out, I don't recommend taking a rest on Monday because Monday is the first day of the week for most people. There are plenty of fitness experts out there who will say to not take your rest on Monday. But for me, resting on Monday works. A rest day for me will typically consists of no exercise, so no jump rope, no running, nothing of that nature, but it will consist of taking walks every 50 minutes for about five to 10 minutes and ensuring that I get at least between 10 and 15,000 steps. But those are walking steps, those are not running, those are not jump rope steps. What I like to do is rest on Monday and I'll explain that and my reasoning for that later in the video and you'll see why I rest on Monday. On Tuesday, what I'll typically do is walk out to the garage and do a 20 to 30 minute jump rope based workout. There are plenty of workouts that I do. I don't plan the workouts in the sense of I'm gonna use this rope for this amount of minutes. Normally I'll make that up as I walk out to the garage. It's not something that I write down. There's no recipe for the workout. The workout that I do on Tuesday follows the basic guideline of using a jump rope and using a kettlebell or some five to 10 pound weights to execute some lunges or lower body exercises such as squats. What I'll normally do is anywhere between three to five minutes of jump rope, depending on which rope I use. If it's a heavier rope, like one of the cross rope weighted ropes or the Elite SRS Muay Thai, the time will be less. It'll be around one to two minutes. If it's a lighter rope, like the rhythm rope, the cross rope bolt, the Buddy Lee Rope Master, any of the lighter PVC or light steel ropes, then the rep will be anywhere between three to five minutes. I like to switch it up every now and then. I have a lot of ropes, so I try to put them all to use during the week. With the kettlebell, I'll normally do some shoulder presses with the kettlebell. I like to do kettlebell swings. I like to do squats with the kettlebell. There are a ton of exercises that you can do with a kettlebell, but I like to incorporate weights and make sure that I'm doing some resistance training in conjunction with the jump rope exercise. Wednesday is a run day for me. I have a treadmill in my house. I use the treadmill for my running, especially living in Michigan because during the winter time, it is not safe to run outside because the sidewalks get icy. I see a lot of folks that have lived here for a long time running outside, but that's not something that I would do. I'd rather be safer and run on the treadmill. Plus on the treadmill, I can control my speed a bit better than I can running outside, and I can track my progress more easily than I can running outside. During the summertime in Michigan and during the fall and the spring, I will run outside. I have run outside several times around here. There are a lot of trails to run around in the northern Detroit area. But during the winter time, at the time of this recording, I do all my running on the treadmill when it starts to get cold out here. And it does get pretty cold up here in Michigan. But the runs, the runs are a lot like the jump rope exercises. I don't plan the runs. I will run at least two miles. And if I run two miles, it's gonna be at a fast pace. It's gonna be around a six minute pace. The last run that I did was at 9.8 miles per hour. So that was about a 12, 14, two mile. And then during the week, if it's a week run, so a Wednesday run, I'll run anywhere between two miles and six miles because during the week I have a very demanding job. I don't have a lot of time to exercise and I like to do other things in the morning like journal and read. So I don't have time to run much more than six miles. A six mile run will normally be at about a 7.30 pace. I've been finishing six miles in around 43 or 44 minutes. So that's a little bit less than a 7.30 pace, which is a 45 minute, six mile pace. So anywhere between two and six miles, truly it depends on how I'm feeling. If I feel like running longer at a slower pace, then I do that. If I feel like I need to up the ante and do less miles, but do them in a more intense fashion, then that's what I do. 
Thursday is another jump rope and weight day, just like on Tuesday. I'll normally switch it up. If I do upper body on Tuesday, then I'll focus more on lower body when I do my circuit training. But the jump rope philosophy and approach is still the same. Anywhere between one to two minutes with the weighted rope and anywhere between three to five minutes with a lighter rope. So I'll focus on either lower body or upper body or I'll throw some abs in there. I'll do some crunches. I'll do some knee to elbows, some calisthenic type exercises. Also with the upper body, I'll throw in push ups. I have perfect push ups I've had for about six or seven years that I still use. And I have an ab carver that I like to use. Ab rollouts are a great exercise for upper body, but they're also good at targeting abs. Thursday looks a lot like Tuesday. It'll be a 20 to 30 minute jump rope base circuit training session with weights. Friday is my second rest day of the week for many reasons. The first reason is I like to have my rest days during the week because I have a very demanding job and I like to have time to myself in the morning. I have to be at work at 0800 every morning and I live about 20 minutes from work. Plus the traffic here can be unpredictable at times on I-696 going toward Detroit Arsenal. So I have to make sure I'm there in time. I have a high visibility demanding job that requires my full attention. So what I like to do is rest on Monday and Friday so that I have more time to conduct my personal development, my journaling, my reflection, and any other activities that I like to do, like recording or editing YouTube videos. I have to wake up early to get all that stuff done. I normally wake up around 4.30 or 5. I have my coffee, I have my journal, I do my meditation. I meditate for at least 100 breaths. So I like to be able to work all that in there. And that's why, part of the reason why I do my rests during the week so that I have more time. I'm not exercising and I have more time for my self-development and self-reflection that I love to do in the morning and that I feel is integral for me to become a better person and also to be able to handle what life throws at me. As I do on Monday, when I rest, I like to ensure that I move about during the day. Sitting down all day is something that I'm not very good at and something I don't like to do. So I make sure that I move and that I'm not sitting at my desk all day. And then when I get home, I might walk for about 10 to 20 minutes on the treadmill and listen to a book or listen to a podcast. But Friday is a rest day for me. When the weekend comes around, I have a different philosophy. When I first came up in the army and I had to go to formation and I was in what I call the conventional army before I switched to the acquisition corps, we had PT formation five days a week, Monday through Friday, and then you don't work on Saturday or Sunday. So I never did any kind of exercise or I rarely did any kind of exercise on Saturday or Sunday. But now since I rest on Monday and Friday, my most intense exercise comes through on Saturday and Sunday. On Saturdays, what I've started doing is going on a 10 to 12 mile road march around my neighborhood every single Saturday. And what that allows me to do is it allows me to listen to audiobooks the entire time. I burn a ton of calories if I'm walking for four hours straight, that's about 11 to 12 miles. So I normally get in about 30,000 steps and it's a great escape for me to be able to think, reflect on what's happened during the week. And there are a lot of great trails around my house. On a Saturday where I do one of these road marches, I normally burn about 3,500 calories that day because even after that, my spouse and I like to go out and try a new restaurant or explore the Detroit area. So on Saturdays, I'll do a long walk slash road march with a backpack. It'll be at least 10 miles and sometimes it'll be upwards of 12 miles. Sunday is probably the most intense exercise day. Every Sunday, I run 10 miles on the treadmill. And this is why I rest on Monday because I have a long road march on Saturday and then I have a 10 mile run on the treadmill 
on Sundays. Right now, I'm running 10 miles at about a 729 pace. That's the fastest I've been able to do it. So it takes about an hour and 15 minutes for me to run 10 miles. After I run 10 miles, I'm normally pretty tired, especially doing it at that pace. That pace is challenging for me. What I like to do afterwards is I like to get some fruit or I like to get some white rice. Even though white rice is high in carbohydrates, my blood sugar tends to spike during the exercise and then it becomes low, especially because I'm fasting while I'm doing that exercise. That's how I normally will recover. I'll get some electrolytes and then I'll get some fruit watermelon, pear, apple, mango, anything. I will normally get some white rice and some sushi or something along those lines. I'll either go to the store and get some sushi or I'll go out to a restaurant and get some sushi. The 10 mile run is the most challenging exercise for me during the week and I load everything into the weekends because I like to be able to free up my time during the week because I don't have a whole lot of time to myself during the week. That is my workout plan as of now. I'm not saying that you should adopt it. It works for me taking two rest days during the week, exercising five days a week, and then segregating my most intense exercises and my longest exercises to the weekend is something that has been working for me. And it's all based on what I have going on in my life right now. If you have a demanding job that requires you to get there early and stay late, you're not gonna have a whole lot of time during the week to exercise. The most important thing about exercise is that you do it. There is no right or wrong way to schedule and program your exercises. You have to make sure that you do an analysis of what you have going on in your life look at what you can control and then program your exercises into the empty gaps in your schedule. That's the best advice I can give you. This is not an exercise plan that I would have been doing two years ago or even a year ago, but because my life changed and some circumstances happened to where I was required to be in the office more, I had to adjust, which is completely fine. You got to adapt and you got to overcome because what's not an option for me is getting out of shape, becoming unhealthy and not maintaining my physical fitness. That's not an option for me. I prioritize my physical fitness, so I have to program that in accordance with what I have going on. <laughs> <laughs>